Hi everybody, Martin of Flicking Feathers again today, and I'm tying this mullet fly for you, is what I call them, the clouds patterns. Um, it's the tagged Romy sand shrimp. This is the fly I caught my first deliberate mullet on, um, and it's very, very effective. Uh, now, and I think you should take it as like a A prototypical pattern. You can you can adjust the shade slightly depending on what the bottom colour looks like where you're fishing, etc. As always, we'll stick a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody that wants to support the channel, get access to the members-only content, the monthly fly tying classes, and be entered into the giveaways. Alternatively, like the video, share the video, subscribe, hit the bell button. Watch it all the way to the end, all oh, that helps the channel a lot to grow. So, I've got my hook in my vise, this is a size 12 Camazan B100G, which is probably your kind of all round size for these, um, 12s and 14s really. And I've run on some Glowbright number 12. Now, in Colin's book, this isn't listed as a material, but it's in the picture, and I sent Colin a message to ask him what it was. Um, and it's something that he's added to the pattern over the years and I mean it works without the green and who knows if it's really making a difference but the green certainly doesn't do any harm so I've run that one, I pulled my tag end over to help prevent any tendency for the floss to roll back, tied it in, and then I've got finished. Right, I'm going to varnish this. Now I know mullet don't have teeth, but this is really to protect the floss from the sand. Um, you know, if you're in the wash, the sand's very abrasive and it can quite quickly tear up that glow bright tag. Now I use varnish, I don't use UV resin because basically I'm batching them right so that's me I've got a dozen and I just pick the first one up and it's dry and I've not had to you know if I'm not talking about it I'm just varnishing it putting it down by the time I get through all the tags I'm ready to start tying I can just pick them up and start tying and it's actually faster than using UV resin because I don't need to pick up my light every time so we're starting some base thread, this is 70 denier danvils um, I think Colin uses GSP but whatever's fine I run on a base I'm going to just have a sort of beige thread base very pale tan, something like that for the eye to the end of the shine curl in line with the bar so now for the hot tag I'm using glow bright number 4 but you can also use fluorescent red wool and I've got 10 strands of the glow bright here and I've just coated there with a loose wrap and then as I go back I'll just draw it in just make sure it stays on top Make sure I'm tied right back, no any spaces. Tail length's up to you, you can leave it a wee bit longer, a wee bit shorter. I like about half a shank, which takes me to there. The rib is a fine gold wire. Got a length here. Should catch this in on my side. Come up and that will let me tidy up the front of that floss. Then the shell back is hens, it's just pearl, pearly, the clear colours number one in the colour code. Now, as you look at it, you'll maybe see one side shiny. I like the shiny side out. Um, so I'm just going to cut this to a point. Do a better job than that. 
just so I can get it started. I'll catch it up near the front, catch it in, and then I'll just take my thread back. Don't worry too much about this creasing, it, w it will crease a wee bit when you put it in. You can, but you can work it when you come to fold it over. I like to take a couple of wraps in there. Again, just make sure that there's no any space. Your, your tie-in points right back at the, at the at the tag. Now, you'll notice you've got quite a lot of length, right? Don't try to cut off enough for one fly, right? Now, I've got two done. I've got another four or five out of this strip. You'll waste much less if you do it like that. If you try to cut one for every fly, you, you end up wasting stuff. Uh, you know, I've seen folk doing it, they try to cut it short and then they don't actually have enough to go over the back, so they have to undo everything. Dubbing. Like Golden Olive, Prisma Dub is what Colin uses. Uh, I've run out of this, but I've blended up some Olive Prisma, Prisma Dubbing with some UV tan and you can hardly tell the difference in the actual shade but you've also got the wee sort of flecks of blue and I believe Mullet can see a bit of UV um, into the UV spectrum which I suspect is why the fluorescence and all that is effective for them um, and I mean I've caught fish on this dubbing You just, as long as you're in about that shade, I think that's fine. But I suppose this is a slight variant. Now, I'm going to build a fairly chunky wee body here. Right, don't you don't want it too skinny because you need to pick out the the dubbing for legs, and you need to have enough sort of body there that it's going to support the shell back. You touch more. Get that in. Just sort of eat that up there. And that's fine. Now I've left myself an eye length clear at the front. You can see that it's quite fat, right? At this stage. Now pull your shell back forward to the front, to the hook eye, and then to try to knock the crease out it, just pinch it around the hook and you'll see it will start trying to take the shape and it'll Try to knock that fold out of it, or any creases out of it, and you'll get a lovely wee shell back shape. I'll just pinch that in, and then make sure you're nice and straight before you begin on top. Right, don't if it's not sitting for you, don't just continue. Make sure it looks the way you want it to. And then. I'll cut it into my hackle pliers and it sits in the desk and it doesn't blow away. Now take my ribbon, I'm going to take a full turn around the tail there which will kind of help to flare the tail slightly and you're ready to come up the body. The number of segments is entirely up to you. You know some folk like quite a lot of segments on their shrimp patterns. I'm going to take five wraps up the body, which will give me six segments. Then up at the head, tie it off, and worry the wire away. So, all that remains to be done now is to pick out the dubbing, and then seal the back and the head. Just don't like. There we go. And I actually like to use my dubbing needle for this. Um, I think you get a better sort of pick. Uh, I want to pick it out quite 
quite thoroughly. So actually, sometimes it's better if, if I like to turn it upside down, and I can see better on the underside. I'm really get in there. And then that gives you some nice legs. Now they're a wee bit long, so just pinch them. You can cut them with scissors, but that gives you too straight an edge in my opinion. I just like to pinch them off. And then just make sure everything's just draw everything down out the way. And then I'm going to come in with my varnish. Do the head. And then, right down the shell back. And this really does make a difference to how long the, the shell back lasts and stays shiny. Right, when you're fishing in the salt water and that, it, it can dull quite, quite quickly. But the varnish just protects it that wee bit and gives you quite a robust, durable wee fly. Make sure the eye is clear and you're done. So there you go. Hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. Romy's tagged sand shrimp. Absolutely deadly pattern for mullet. Whether it's golden greys, uh, thin lips, flatheads, whatever, they all eat this. So, hope that was useful. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you for another video. Till then, guys. Bye.